In this video, we're going to be concerned with determining if the function that we're given, which in this case is a piecewise function defined as so, is continuous at the points x equals 1 and x equals 3. To start off, we know that in order for a function to be continuous at a certain point in question, we, know, we need to have that f of that value, if we plug in the point we're concerned with into the function, that returns a value, that value exists. We know that the limit of f of x as x approaches that value exists. And for the third and final part, those values have to match. The limit has to equal the value that we get after plugging in that point that we're concerned with into our function. So let's look at x equals three first. We're gonna answer these three questions and see if we get that f of x is continuous at this point or not. So the first one we're gonna ask ourselves, what is f of three? By definition of the piecewise function, we see that if x is three, f of x is zero. So f of three equals zero. f of three exists, so step one is satisfied. That's a return to good value right there, right? For part two, we're concerned with the limit of f of x as x approaches three. When dealing with the limit of f of x as x approaches three, what we're dealing with is not necessarily the value of x is three, but we're dealing with values that are arbitrarily close to three. So anything that's not three, but gets closer and closer to it. So when we evaluate the limit of f of x as x approaches three, we're actually gonna use this piece of the piecewise function to analyze the limit. So let's go ahead and fill that in here. So we get the limit as x approaches three, x squared minus nine over x minus three. When we pass to the limit, we try to plug in the value that we're approaching to see if we get a, our limit and evaluate it correctly, right? But when we get that, we get three squared, which is nine minus nine over three minus three. So we get zero over zero, which is an indeterminate form. When we reach one of these, we ask ourselves, what can we do to manipulate this function inside of our limit? And in this case, we can factor the numerator a little bit, right? That's a difference of squares up there. So instead of x squared minus nine, we have x minus three times x plus three and we see that x minus three appears in both the numerator and denominator. It's a factor of multiplication, so we can divide that out. So what we're left with is evaluating the limit as x approaches three of x plus three. We pass to the limit once again, and we find that our limit is six. Okay, so our limit exists. Step two is fine, right? The limit as x approaches three of f of x exists, but then question, Part three of being continuous at this point of three is do these values match? Does zero equal six? The answer is no. So limit as x approaches three of f of x does not equal f of three. And this tells us, this implies that f of x is not continuous at x equals three. So we've done all this work to realize that it's not continuous. And now we need to answer the question, what type of discontinuity do we have? Well, we took care of doing the work to answer that question in this process here. We knew that everything was good until we got to this point where it didn't match. Once we found out that it's not continuous, we know that it's some type of discontinuity. And so we look at the qualification of what it means to be a removable discontinuity. It says, well, if you're not continuous at that point, but your limit exists, then you have a removable discontinuity. And that's exactly what we have here. So at x equals three, we have a removable discontinuity. That's what we have dealing with at x equals three. We have a removable discontinuity because the limit as x approaches three of f of x does not equal the same value that we get at f of three. Okay, so we've taken care of the case for x equals three. We're done with that part of it. Let's look at x equals one. So at x equals one, we're gonna answer the same three questions that we just did for x equals three, but now using one instead of three. So f of one, let's evaluate that and see what we get there for existence. So x does not equal three, one doesn't equal three. We're gonna use this piece of the piecewise function to analyze f of one. So we get one squared minus nine over one minus three or one squared is one, minus nine is negative eight, one minus three is negative two, negative eight divided by negative two gives us a positive four. 
Okay, so we got that for f of 1. f of 1 exists. That's all fine and dandy. Now, let's analyze the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x. Okay, so in this case, we're still going to use the same function we just used to plug in 1 into because we're going to be approaching arbitrarily close to 1. We're not necessarily concerned with the value of 3 because as we get arbitrarily closer and closer to 1, we're dealing with values that are farther away from 3 and closer to 1. So we don't really need to worry about this value being that outlier or something that worries us at, at all. We're going to be worried about values that are close to 1 and namely not 3. Okay. So the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x is simply the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared minus 9 over x minus 3. And if we pass to the limit here, we see that we're going to get similar work as to what we just did up here. We're going to get 1 squared minus 9 over 1 minus 3, or that's going to evaluate to be 4 again. And so we say again, step 3 kind of gets satisfied in that fashion, right? Limit of f of x as x approaches 1 equals f of 1. So since all three conditions are satisfied, this means that f of x is continuous at x equals 1.